Hello and a good day to you. So in Singapore, there's a common belief that, you know, being a hawker is tough. Long hours, hot environment, maybe the profit not even that high. Can't even take a holiday without losing money. But yet, at the same time, there are a few hawkers that are doing so well. In fact, they got time to go TikTok. Leh. So for today's episode, we'll be checking out some of these TikToker-run hawker stalls to see if they can walk to walk. Or are they all just TikTok? Let's go. So we're near the year end, it's raining almost every day. Every day is kind of cold. So actually this is a perfect opportunity because I'm craving for something warm, something hot, to warm myself from the inside out. So that's the reason why I'm starting off with our Tampanese hut for Botak Cantonese porridge. So if the store name sounds so it's probably because you read about it, uh, whereby the store owner's daughter, Lim Hui Yi, used to be a presidential bodyguard and then quit her job to help out with the family business. Lah. She's also very active on TikTok as HawkerGirl98 and recently they've also opened a second outlet at Pongo. Uh, I'm here at the or original outlet at Our Tempties Hub. Lah. So I ordered the Century and Lim Pork Porridge and I also added 60 cents for the add-on egg. And I would say in this case, I would recommend getting it because what I noticed that not a lot of porridge hawkers do is that the uncle actually split the egg white and egg yolks, separate it and then cook the egg white with the porridge to make it even more thick. Another thing very interesting is that the yu chiao is very, very fried. There's no whitish layer inside. It's all fried throughout. Mm. It's almost like a crouton. Everything is crispy. That's good. I like this crunchy texture to add to the softness of the porridge. Okay, but most importantly, the porridge. Is it seasoned well? Cantonese porridge for me. The porridge needs to be very, very broken up. The rice bits, and that requires a lot of work to make sure that the rice grains separate and break apart when they are cooking. And in this case, if you look carefully, right, I don't really see any rice bits. It's all mixed up. I would say pretty well done. Of course, I'm aware that there are people who prefer their rice porridge to be a bit more grainy, to still see the rice bits. But this is not that kind of porridge. It's still a very good porridge, it's very easy to consume. The century egg is very fragrant, even though they chop it up into very small pieces. For me personally, I think I prefer if the century egg is a bit more chunky, because I like my century egg yolk texture, you know. But the aroma of the century egg is definitely in the porridge itself. So, well done for that. They also got these little bits of uh, pork mince ball. It's loosely packed together. You can almost smoosh it apart with your, by pressing it against the tongue and the top of your mouth. Finish my bowl. Clean plate. Compared to like another very popular porridge place that everyone raves about, this one, while flavorful, doesn't leave you feeling thirsty at the end of the day, which means it's not overloaded with salt and MSG. Okay, for the next location, I'm still at Tampanese. I don't know why I say with Tampanese and TikTok hawkers, lah, but I'm at Everyday Tam Coffee Shop located at 477 Tampanese Street something something for my father's bar chop. It's run by a TikToker by the name of Aaron, aka I sell bar chop me. So naturally, the shop sells bar chop me. Lah. And apparently, he came from a lineage of uh, the bar chop me founder. And something about bar chop me in the East. They like their bar chow mee soup. Like Bedok bar chow mee, the 85 bar chow mee. That soup, personally, right, actually, I kind of prefer. This one is soup small, $4. And actually, quite generous. Man. One thing I immediately noticed is uh, the mee kia, right, is not your run of the mill uh, type of mee kia that you get at Japanang fish ball noodles. It looks different. It looks a little bit chunkier than your normal bar chow kind of reminds me of the slightly higher quality ones that you get at maybe Kuki or even Chongqing Chidi Mi. First things first, I mean it's a soup bar chomi, so naturally I want to try the soup first. You can see a lot of pork bit floating about. Mm, very nice garlicky aroma. Very soothing, very comforting. And occasionally you get kicks of that pork lard aroma, which I love. 
This is a Teochew style one. Uh. So it will come with this. Some will call this one time, but the correct term to give it is actually kiao. Quite savory, quite salty, quite fragrant as well. The skin still has a bit of a bite. But most importantly, the noodle. Got well, a nice bite, feels a little bit chunkier, a little bit more on the al dente side. Not bad, quite like it. After eating away the noodles and the liao and all that, then you look at the soup, right? And then you realize, oh, this is really flavor packed. A little bit cloudy, got a lot of pork bits, very fragrant. If you ask me, right, this, this is Singapore's ramen. Mm. Yeah, you hear the Amor say, these chicken wings look good. Old Airport Road Hawker Centre only just recently reopened after some renovations. It's got like spanking new seats, a lot cleaner look, the new tiles, as well as uh, they installed big ass fans all over the place. So it's a lot more cooling right now. Along with the reopening, I think a recent TikTok account has been getting some attention because uh, I think they, they were the first to actually step inside before the opening lah, and that is salt. And what salt is known for is soy garlic fried chicken. Alongside the fried chicken, they also have a second brand, I guess, called Hebrews, whereby they have a, a variety of uh, chicken-based soups. I guess the most signature one will be the ginseng chicken. What we've ordered is number one, the signature chicken cutlet with soy garlic fried rice. Soy garlic fried chicken. I realized my mistake, I should have probably gone for a different sauce. And then ginseng chicken soup. I think this one we had to wait about close to 20 minutes, which is okay, lah, I guess. Mm. 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 This is the kind of fried rice I like. I like the peppery kind of fried rice and also it's very like xiang. I think it's because of the garlic and the wok hey. How to say it? To me it's a good gu zao wei. A lot of garlic fried rice that I tried right, it's very oily. Not as peppery, you don't have the peppery kick. Or either that it's too garlicky, that it's too gelat. And I really like the veggies. I don't like fried rice that have too many unnecessary things, like peas. Okay, this one is string bean. Ah. Ah, string bean, it adds like the crunch, you know. Mm. But it doesn't alter the taste. You know, like pea have taste. And also the crunch is not really there. It's just like mush. Chicken cutlet. This doesn't look as crispy as other cutlets, ah. oh, but can feel the crisp. It's not like the heavily battered kind of chicken cutlet. And you can see the soy glaze on top. Mm. The skin is still crispy. The meat is still somewhat juicy. And the soy garlic glaze that they use, right, is not too strong. I don't know, this particular taste, it just tastes very good so to me. <laughs> it reminds me of pasar malam somehow. Back when pasar malam was good. <laughs> you eat already, you feel addicted, kind okay? Like shook. Okay, the chicken cutlet texture and the way that it's prepared is familiar to me. The soy glaze to me is just somewhat Korean but not fully Korean because the, fu the fully Korean soy glaze is very thick and very sweet. Very sweet. This one is not very this sweet. One is not sweet. I don't know, I have tasted this before once. Like those pasman for selling cha chi pie and all that. Yeah. Take you to your past life. Uh. <laughs> to a memory that you never had. <laughs> but it was a good time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna try the chicken wing now. Look at the crunch. As the Ang Mo say when they were passing by. The chicken wing good. Definitely crispier than the cutlet. Mm. But the taste is almost the same. Almost the same. But I prefer wings. Ah. For me, right, wow, very hard fight. Because like, this is crispier. But with the, the fried rice, mm. the colour is a good match. The crispiness is very satisfying. How's your ginseng chicken? Oh, not as salty. It's almost like Korean ginseng chicken. Ginseng chicken is good. 
Uh, I'll come back for the fried rice. Salt actually has a second outlet at Raffles Place. So if you are working in the CBD area and you want to try it out, actually you can try over there. Lah. I'm pretty sure they offer the same things. Good. when you have a top plate on anything, right, and it comes seasoning at you, uh, you know there's that excitement level there. Lah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Right, so we are now at Changchen Meihua Kopitiam, located at 432 Woodlands Street 32 for Kiang Kiang Tepanyaki. Get it? Kiang Kiang Kiang! Anyways, uh, the store owner, she documented her transition of being a SIS builders into being a store owner selling this Tepanyaki on TikTok. And that gained her quite a number of followers and I guess the followers do translate to uh, customers because business is quite doing quite well especially in the place like we were quite a lot of all these like bread so-called brand name offers like Taihua pork noodle is here as well good when you have a top plate on anything right and it comes seasoning at you are uh, you know there's that excitement level there like. so it's really nice to see that at least it doesn't turn cold before you even start eating so that's good and the serving is pretty good I got the basil pork it's not the thickest cut, but it's substantial enough. Lah. Then some pasta noodles. Of course, there is also an egg at the side. Mm. Oh damn, this is super tender. It's a shame my right tooth is acting up a bit. Okay, you can. Fork and spoon. But you really have to treat it like a knife. Huh? So I think I'm just going to cut it up. Taiwan Tepan concept. It's a concept that comes and goes. I remember seeing this back in Aukang, where I used to grow up in. I enjoy this actually. And one thing I like about the sauce, when you mix it up, is that you've got the sweetness of the mushroom sauce. The black pepper isn't too strong, but when you bite into the black pepper corn, right? Then you get that burst of black, black pepper, spiciness and aroma. The pasta, I wouldn't say is the most al dente. It feels more like a chow mian than a pasta. <laughs> I mean, it's Taiwan tepanyaki. Like. It's supposed to be a, more, a bit more asian -y. If anything, I feel they could do with a little bit more bean sprouts. Because I could barely find any around here. Egg is a little rather cooked by this point. I think this is a customer issue. Like. Because the way they pretended, there's no other way around it. I should have taken the egg off the hot plate when I started eating. So the egg yolk will still stay runny. For this basil pork, what stands out for me is the tenderness of this pork. It reminds me a bit of like the ones I had at Buta Hage, the Buta Don. I wonder what meat they use, as in what cut they use. Alright, and we come to the end of this episode. I think it's safe to say that in this day and age, for most businesses, especially F&B, having a strong social media presence is very crucial. And with that, I think perhaps we should relook at the way that we were approaching this video. Rather than saying that the boss has so much free time and is doing business so well that they have time to be on social media, perhaps, maybe, business is doing well because they're doing social media. But does being on TikTok mean that the food is good? I think that is irrelevant. They're on TikTok, that's why they're doing good. But they're doing good for a long time because the food is good. And that was the case for myself when I tried the food from all four stalls. What about you? Have you tried the food from these stalls featured? Do you have any other TikTok famous shops that you would like to recommend? Leave them in the comment section below. If you want to watch more videos from me, click on the videos here and here, or you can consider subscribing to the channel. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!